So yeah, I guess this this first one is supposed to be uh, you know more informal session, um, just to sort of introduce ourselves, um, thinking about uh, you know when let's let's have a round of introductions and um, talk about what we are looking to achieve from this, um, and what else. So and and which direction do you or sort of you know what sort of discussions would you prefer? Uh, in the book club as we move forward, um, you know, any suggestions and any time changes if needed, <laughs> I will be happy to accommodate that. So yeah, let's uh, maybe I'll, I'll get, um, I'll, I'll do the, I'll, I'll do the starting. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Priyanka. Um, I'm uh, based in East Coast in US, um, Boston, Natick, Massachusetts um, specifically. Um, I work as a data scientist slash analyst um, at right now I'm actually in between, but um, I, last I was working at a health and wellness company. Um, and what else? So I, I love working in R. I think I've been doing R programming for more than five years now, but it's every day it feels like, oh, I'm just a beginner. Um, so um, I guess a couple of um, months ago, um, I was doing like so much of visualization then in some of the projects I realized um, things were just, you know, like I, I guess I, I was somehow somewhere lost between making the visuals and then interpreting them. So I, I guess I was, I was running short of time for doing the interpretation. So mm -hmm. I realized I want to spend a little more um, time on maybe, you know, learning all of this at once and then want, you know, be able to use this in a, in a much quicker way in my next set of projects. So. I hope to, you know, sort of learn that skill of um, knowing the basics through and through and, um, you know, hopefully maybe within this book club, maybe we could start looking at not just making the chart, uh, a plot, but also thinking through what, what it means and, you know, what interpretations it comes, it, it sort of brings up um, both low hanging fruits and something peculiar that uh, if that comes through, which is, I mean, practically not part of the book as such, but you know, I, I'm just throwing that as an idea if the group would like to do that. Um, anyone wants to go next? Sure, I can do it. No problem. Uh, well, he hello everyone. Uh, my name is Gustavo, as you guys already know. I am from Brazil, as I said. And I am a biologist and actually I'm finishing my PhD right now. I work with ecology slash statistic modeling. And my goal here is because I use ggplot so much, like really, really, really much because I need to generate maps and I wor I'm working speci specifically with uh, species distribution modeling. So at the end of my modeling sessions, I end up with lots of maps and I'm using ggplot not only to plot these maps, like raster maps, but I also plot lots of tables and lots of graphics like box plot, histograms and whatnot. So I've been programming in R for the past five years, maybe five, six years since my masters. And I still, I still consider myself to be kind of like a, a noob into our programming, especially ggplot, when we consider that ggplotting stuff is kind of different from basic R plots. So I never actually read that book, but this will be, I believe, a very good opportunity to learn and to discuss new stuff, especially uh, things that I get stuck with and that I don't know how to solve. And I believe this will be a good session. So. Thank you for having me. Hi, <clears throat> I can go next. <clears throat> so my name is Ryan. I live in Houston, Texas. I work in the freight forwarding and logistics industry. And about three years ago, I tried to decide whether I was going to learn R or Python, and I didn't learn either. And then about a year after that, I tried again and also didn't learn either. And then around November of last year, I decided I just need to pick one and go with it. And so I picked R. And since November, I just jumped into the deep end and have been on R for DS. We did, a, we did that book club in a few months, well, several months, and then just started uh, mastering Shiny maybe a month ago or so. 
And then um, I saw ggplot came up and I was all over that too, because these are just skills that I need to level up on. And, um, you know, I go into it every week and I have no idea what I'm doing and I come out of it every week knowing slightly more. So I, I consider it a win, but I'm, I'm glad to be here too. And I set aside the time on my calendar. So I anticipate being here as, as much as I can. I'll go next. Okay. Um, okay. Um, my name's Kent. Um, I live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Um, I'm a longtime software developer. Work right now for Akoya Biosciences doing analysis of tissue image data. Um, Gustavo, I was interested because I'm doing some spatial analysis also of a, a different kind of data, but maybe similar analysis. Um, I'm a big fan of ggplot for especially for exploratory visualizations for and and displaying things. I've been using it for a, quite a while. I figure I'm I feel like I'm pretty solid on the basics, but some of the more obscure corners are still pretty obscure to me. So I'm really hoping to just get a deeper knowledge of kind of how the pieces fit together and maybe learn some pieces of ggplot that I'm not familiar with already. Yeah, I can go next. Uh, my name's Ryan as well. Um, I live in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, my particular interests or, or what I'm, I'm focused on, uh, focusing on work related, um, I service the rail industry and we do a lot of work with, uh, uh, I guess, Linux log data, uh, uh, IoT type processing data. Um, I'm working with our, our current teams in moving them into more of a statistical modeling versus uh, uh, lots of pivot tables right now. So I'm trying to uh, get the team to, to recognize a larger scheme of, of, of statistical modeling. Uh, this will actually be my fourth book club. Uh, Ryan uh, and I are, are on the uh, Mastering Shiny uh, cohort currently. Um, I'm also in the R4DS uh, uh, cohort number five this time around. Uh, I am going to be joining the EPGS. I think that's engineering production grade shiny apps. Uh, Ryan, that takes it a, a one step beyond where we're at right now. But, uh, and then uh, with this book club, and I think John is going to be starting another uh, session uh, for practical stats, but it's not the practical stats book. I think it's IS, ISLR. ISLR, yeah, ISLR. Yeah. It's gonna be so, morning of Mondays. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to try and join with that one, too. So uh, I'm, I'm currently in five book clubs at the moment or planning on being in five. And uh, I don't know, I, I really enjoy using our uh, my uh, I'm a graduate student from the University of Nebraska. Um, we were focused on business analytics. Uh, our entire program was uh, delivered using R. Uh, so I'm, I'm more frequent uh, or familiar with with uh, the R studio side of things. I do want to bridge into Python if that opportunity ever presents itself. So I know that's a, a necessity in data science. So mm -hmm. at any rate, looking forward to this. Thank you. Sure, yeah, and, and you can always do that uh, within our studio now. Um, I don't know, what, when when did they bring that up? The, uh, probably in 1.4 um, that you can also, you know, write your Python codes. I, I did one simple script testing for one of my, you know, um, not directly related stakeholders, but you know, she just needed to pull some data from the API. And it seemed like that API only, um, uh, you know, supported a few languages. Python was one of them and there was no R support. So I was like, um, okay, I can do that for you. Maybe this is an opportunity or time, good time for me to, you know, get that connection, learn about articulate and things like that. So even though they, it, it really was like a simple process, but, you know, it's just the first time it, things are so difficult, like pip install itself was like, for, it took, took me forever. <laughs> so yeah, but then I'm, um, I have also joined like, like after DS, uh, I'm also virtually part of uh, PyLadies uh, and Py, uh, Boston Python group. So I was like, actually able to seek help there. So that's how I actually figured it out on my own. It wasn't working out. <laughs> So yeah, having a community that is, is really, really helpful. And it has helped me at in, in many, many, many times. So yeah, uh, I think we have left, Michael left from for introductions. Hi, yeah, my name is Michael. I live in Minnesota. 
Um, I work currently in a kind of a reporting data analyst type of position, um, not professionally using R um, in that, more like Power BI and such for, at the moment, but I started using R a little more than a year ago uh, as part of a master's analytics program and had uh, initially used um, SAS, and then I had a, actually a visual analytics course where I used Tableau and I kind of knew, and then at that point I was like, I want to do R or Python and it was kind of, you know, choosing between them. And, and then one of the assignments in the visual analytics course was, okay, you've used, you know, Tableau or whatever for your primary tool for this course. Now choose a different one um, for this assignment, a different, a different tool for this particular assignment just to do some simple visuals. And then I had the R4DS book that I had picked up because I had saw it like advertisers, like, oh, a good book on data wrangling and did some basic bar charts. And then, so that, at that point, I kind of made the switch um, over to the R for the rest uh, of my program. And um, as far as other book clubs that I've been in, I've been, it was in the data science and education book club, which I enjoyed. Um, and so that was kind of, uh, you know, helped me to be uh -huh. engaged and see, I've, I've tried to sort of like follow along with some videos online and read the book on my own. And that's not been super successful, but when I've actually been part of the group, that was you know, a better experience. And it was great, you know, to, to present one week. Um, as far as the, the topic at hand, I mean, I've, you know, I've certainly been interested in, in visualizations and, you know, how, how can you, I like the idea behind grammar of graphics and it's not just like oh you've got categorical data do a bar chart you know and kind of making those decisions but more like this fundamental thought process of what exactly is the data and how am I mapping it and either kind of seeing if that philosophy actually works in real life or isn't you know is worth it or also but or at the same time you know at least being able to more or less do much more unique visuals um, instead of just like the out, outside of the box visuals that you can do in like Power BI or just like a basic ggplot bar plot, but something, I don't, I don't know, like, you know, like in data journalism or 538, you see stuff that's really clean, simple, but is clearly like not just click a couple buttons and get it done. And so I feel like if I really, you know, mastered this book that like all, like a lot of those more complicated visuals would be, would be possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that last point in particular because it's, it's one, I don't know, I get kind of excited about just the beauty of, of data visualizations too. And so yeah, you, you get to a point with Excel or Power BI or Tableau where you just want to polish it just a little bit more. I'm with you on that one. I also agree. I mean, I've enjoyed working with Tableau. Uh, I think except that you, at, after a certain point, you're like, oh, I've done this before. Or I don't want to do it. And then you're like, oh, I wish I could work in my favorite R. Um, so, and this was a scenario at one of my previous positions where I was, I was really excited working in Tableau because again, um, like I was saying earlier, I think when, when you're working on a lot of exploratory data visualizations, um, you don't necessarily always need everything. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> background music so you don't always need all the visuals right unless they tell you something you probably don't need to you know necessarily code code um, but again if you're only working in R, we, that's how we would do it um in fact i'm personally on you know working on um my i guess kind of side project where i'm trying to see within r if i could you know the, you know sort of um design a process or a workflow where <laughs> I, I wouldn't have to uh, plot everything all the time. Um, sorry, I think something, we moved something. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, some, some quick way of uh, testing, okay, how many uniques I have and how many, uh, what does this plot look like, like a frequency plot or something. And if it looks good, then I want to go and spend some time coding it, you know, adding all the layers and something like that. But yeah, uh, like I said, so I think always good to have a reusable coded um, structure to, to your visuals or anything for that matter. So, okay. Um, so this, we, we've just had a round of instruction, uh, introductions and yeah, 20 minutes into it. So 15 minutes of introduction. Um, so 
Uh, any any ideas on um, so generally i think how, how we do the book clubs uh, is that we you know everyone uh, like people volunteer and then we talk about everyone goes through one specific chapter we go through it together uh, maybe have conversations on things we agree or disagree on um so we could maybe just follow the same pattern or add or remove things if anyone has anything to add here I was trying to look in the uh, the Slack channel. Did we set up a uh, repository for this book club yet at all? Or is yeah. there a calendar for it? Okay. Yeah, no, there is a um, GitHub repo. Um, I'm not sure if John shared it, but he, he gave it. He gave yeah. me the access so I can share it. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me let me see if I can find that too, and I'll connect to there as well. Sure. Okay. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so I, I personally was thinking, and, and I'm not sure if we would be able to do that because when the interpretation piece that I was saying is more of, you know, geom specific, though this book is, uh, you know, it covers a lot and, and not specifically focusing on one geom. So maybe it's maybe it, if, if people are interested, we could probably come back to it at the end. Uh, I think like uh, the second cohort of Mastering Shiny did, you know, having more discussions um, to which which were of interest. So we could do that as well. Uh, and I guess I, I do want to confirm. So this uh, this time is still good. Is is good for everyone? Or we could maybe push it out now. Pull 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 as in you know like pre phone an hour if that helps, which would help for me. So. <laughs> Seems like moving it up an hour so your babysitter can be here would be really helpful. <laughs> All right. Is everybody comfortable and available at that time? Yes. Yeah, sure. When when we sent out the um, you know, the final announcement and I was like, John, can I can I make a change? And he's like, no, no, let's not do that. Maybe I've already made that announcement. So um, okay, that's cool. And and I think a big reason for me to pick up that was actually when we were doing the um, the, sur the survey link that they sent. One second. That had maximum number of people at this time in the day. And, and that's why I was saying, so a few people were from the UK time zone. So for them, it's like 8 p.m. And some people I know are in, in other uh, book clubs. Uh, so, um, all right. What else? So I I do have uh, I did prepare just a you know brief introduction to the introduction chapter. If you want to talk about that now or um, uh, it's it's a small one. So we could if if you want to do it next time, we could do that and chapter one. Um, so yeah, I mean I think again one one more logistics things to add is uh, like I was saying. So every week we would decide, you know, obviously it's, you know, we, we keep reading the consecutive chapters each week unless we decide not, you know, to take a break or for some reason if there are holidays, which is actually next Monday for all the US folks, um, Gustavo. So we have Labor Day weekend coming up next week. So um, next Monday would be, I think we all will be off, you know, having some family gathering or things like that. So, so unless, you know, there are situations like that, we would generally continue to read next chapter and then one of us will volunteer um, to present and then we, we can have discussions. Um, so I can do the first one as I'm the facilitator. I could, um, like I was saying, I, if we just want, I mean, if in case people, have, I mean, nobody has read chapter one, the introduction, um, I, I'm, I'm fine doing that next time, um, whatever everybody feels comfortable with. Yeah, I, I read it. I'd be happy yeah. to go ahead. Okay. Maybe. All right. Okay, so I can share my screen. And, um, Michael said, could we do 1230 Central, which is 130? Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Um, so Michael says, um, can we do, um, so 1230 Central would be, I think, 130 Eastern. So 
I guess I can, if, if I have to present, I guess I would just have to uh, squeeze my work for 30, my presentation of 30 minutes and we can then do uh, discussion otherwise. And, you know, I would be a little distracted, but that's okay. Um, at least he'll be able to join. I'm sorry, I'm still talking about time. Is there anybody favoring one or the other? I'm available at 12.30, 12.30 to 1.30 Central as well. Um, yeah, it sounds like the only constraint would just be on your side. <laughs> uh, Ryan, can... Yeah, I agree. I have no problem with the time okay. zone too. Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's do that. So, I mean, it, good. At least it's at least it's something better for me, and then we can still have Michael uh, continue. All right. So, uh, I was supposed to share my screen. Here is my studio. Okay, I guess this is the one. Um, let me know if you can share my see my screen. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be a quick introduction. Um, so yeah, we've, we've had the introductions. <laughs> Chapter one on introduction. Um, it, it really is, you know, just a brief discussion on what to expect, what it is not going to give you. And, um, you know, like just the basics of sort of, um, yeah, like the, the topics that are coming in, in the following chapters. So, um, Again, so we, we're talking about the ggplot2 book and uh, for, you know, assuming if there are people who do not have any background, let's try to understand what is ggplot2. ggplot2 is, it's an R package for producing statistical or data graphics. And, and this is quoted from the book. And I actually um, you know, marked these two words as in italic because I was like, uh, it's, a, it's a book club, right? Let's have a little informal set discussion on why exactly would you say this? Like I generally say, okay, uh, you know, I'm producing graphics, I'm producing visuals. I'm not sure why these words come in here, like statistical comma or data graphics. Um, any thoughts? Sorry, my first point itself was you know, con um, like contradictory or something. Con what is that word? I don't know. Um, it was something um, conspicuous for me for lack of a better word. So their plots are based on data as opposed to like an infographic, for example, that maybe is more illustrative and more showing a lot of data. I think maybe that's what it means. Yeah, I believe it's, it's the same thing that comes to my mind. When, when, you, when you tell me something like statistical data and when you just say data, it's like two opposite things in my mind. So if you say like statistical graphics, I only think about like histograms or box plot. But when you say data, like general data, it could be like infographics, like Ken said, or just any other type of data. So I believe that's that's the point here with this this phrase, maybe. Okay. Cool. So yeah, so starting with the fact that ggplot2 is a package. Let's see. Um, and it is, I think the most important piece with ggplot2 is understanding the grammar of graphics, which is the, um, I think, which which the book says, and, and in general, you would experience as you start to learn, dig deeper, that this underlying grammar based off of grammar of graphics is what makes it very strong and it makes it so powerful that it helps you, uh, you know, build things on top of each other. So uh, you basically follow a simple set of principles, which I will talk about. There's a you know good graphic that I uh, picked up from other presentations and I'll share that presentation as well later. Um, it was presented uh, by Minakshi Kushwaha, another R4DS member in, uh, I think our ladies STL uh, sometime last year in, during the pandemic. Um, and I guess what, that was also one of the interesting um, talks for me uh, for, for this stop, on this topic. And um, so, yeah, based on, uh, right, following from that gra grammar of graphics, it helps, you know, it, direct, it defines that the grammar of graphics allows um, this package to be, or, or this package is defined to be designed, sorry, to be work uh, to work iteratively by you, you keep adding layers 
and keep improvising your visual. Um, so again, you know how, how the book says is you use this package to make your visuals, but they, they're not very standardized. You can, there are so many things, there are so many options it provides you that you can, um, you know, you can constantly keep updating your visual to suit your needs, to make it very specific to, you know, your organization or to, to your work team. And, uh, you know, probably that that's the last thing that I don't want to touch now, but themes is, um, you know, what uh, basically helps with that. Uh, Ryan, you have a question. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. So just this is a rhetorical question for the whole group or, or an overhead question for the whole group. So ggplot is part of base R, correct? And then ggplot2 is part of the tidyverse. Am I stating that correctly? Or is it a completely no. different? No. no. No, ggplot is obsolete. There is really no ggplot. OK. OK. So that's where the number two comes from. It's the second iteration mm -hmm. or second packaging of this I think grammar so. for graphics. But OK. It's been, it's been at ggplot2 for a long time. And when you when you when you instantiate the tidyverse or install the package tidyverse, ggplot2 comes with that uh, container, yeah. right? Okay. Yes. Very good. Yeah, so I think it's it's um, it's the other way around. So ggplot2 itself has its own identity. So even if before, long before tidyverse was, okay. uh, you know, it was in, in uh, was in, not in, what am I going to say? Um, before Tidyverse came into the picture, uh, ggplot2 existed. And then Tidyverse itself is basically, you know, it, it is pulling from all the useful packages that already exist and it uses that. Uh, for example, even the, the pipe, right? It comes from Magritte package. And so Tidyverse imports all of that, uses, combines everything that's good from different packages and then um, sort of gets to that, uh, language specific, you know, uh, functions, uh, which help you basically, you know, write in that specific spe special manner, which uh, is easier to read and things like that. Very so, good. yeah, good. so yeah, in fact, that, that's a good point. So when, when I say layers, and I'll, I'll get to that definition, but it, it kind of does that. Uh, it allows you or ggplot2 allows us to, uh, you know, take define the visual in, in bits and pieces. And uh, like I was saying, so like you add a function in next line, like in tidyverse, you add a layer um, specific to uh, different components of your plot. Um, and that, you know, that gives me a good um, leeway to move to the next uh, point of which is you know what, what are those components now the grammar of graphics basically is it's a um, it's a way of defining uh, different it, it's a combination of components of a visual and you know understanding that is is all about um, understanding them and and talking or, or using them in in a certain way to get to what you want uh, I guess is is what it's it's all about um so uh i think it like i was saying so their basic um i guess atom if i could relate that to would be layer and it's a collection of geometric elements and statistical transformations meaning every single uh detail that you want to add to your uh, visual is is provided by a layer and all these sort of provide that layer and um just to finish up my my previous thought so when i was doing that parallel between tidyverse and uh, ggplot2 in tidyverse you we use pipe in here uh, we use plus for you know adding that that layer um so i think this is from the grammar of graphics book or but i for now i just picked it up from one of the presentations i was mentioning so we we start uh, making our visual always from the bottoms up in this uh, way you start with the data, right? You you always need some data to start with what you are interested in plotting. And then you look at how would you map it to your X and Y axes? So once you have thought about that, you want to look at um, like what statistics are you interested in? So is it uh, the frequency counts? Is it the um, percentages or is it the actual identity? Uh, and I guess we'll get talk about those Sorry, and we will get to talk about those in the following chapters. Um, again, uh, scales, geometries are 
further more um, specifics, um, I just will define them as I had so as all they were these were presented in the book in this chapter. So scales uh, it maps your values in the data space to the values in aesthetic space. So stats and um, statistics and mapping actually is um, and tell me uh, correct me Kent if I'm wrong. So the according to, based on what I understand, the statistics and mapping are part of that aesthetics or maybe actually just mapping. Mapping uh, is uh, what defines the aesthetics of, um, you know, the, in the most basic sense of the, of the visual that you're trying to make. So like I was saying, so X and Y axis, what, um, you know, what are your X and Y variables going to be? And, you know, if you're adding any colors, if you're adding any fill component, so all of that is defined in um, your aesthetic. In some cases, the fill and color actually go out of the aesthetic uh, mapping. Uh, and, and there are, you know, different reasons for that because depending on whether you're trying to make the change in the, in the plot itself or um, in, in, the, in, in the rest of the design, Kent, I need help here. How, how do I mention that, that difference? Yeah. You you're talking about like putting the, the fill or the color as a value inside of AES tag. or outside. Yeah. So the mapping is which variables in your data set go to which aesthetics. And then if you have a something in which you don't want to map, like you want something to just be red, for example, you would put that outside of the aesthetic. So this one just has red fill or red color instead of mapping to some column in the data. Okay. Okay, so with respect to the data, if there's anything that has to map, so if, if I want to, you know, do a male uh, gender, if I want to use a gender variable to fill, to say, to showcase whether this is male or female for whatever I'm plotting, then that would be inside, in, in that would be part of the aesthetics mapping, uh, AES. Right. If not, it's outside. Okay, makes sense. Cool. So moving forward, a facet is. Yeah, you, I don't think you would ever put a variable name outside of the aesthetics for mapping. That wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I, I would. Like if you were mapping gender, that would just to fill, that would always be an aesthetic. Mm -hmm. But if you. I, anyway, we should probably move on. This is kind of a fine point, and we'll get to it, I'm sure, in more detail later. Sure. Uh, Ryan, you had something to say? Oh, I was just going to recall from the R for DS book, I think it was, or one of the early books that I used, there was a case where you do put a variable just to try it out. You put a variable outside the aesthetic and it just maps it to like the primary color value, for instance. So like, doesn't matter what it is. It just always shows up as red. And then you okay. start to wonder like, well, why is everything just red? Well, it's because it's outside of the aesthetic. Anyway. Yeah, yeah that's I think all. that's what Kent was saying. So it makes sense. All right, so um, moving to facets, then uh, it, it allows you to, you know, break up your um, visual in individual sections, you know, whatever. So if, like I was saying earlier, if I want to use gender as a variable for faceting, which means, um, so I, I could use any categorical variable in, uh, you know, either within one chart, say, you know, I want to look at the bar graphs separate together, or if I want to look at, you know, whatever distribution I'm looking at, um, but then each of them in the separate graphs side by side. So that's where I would use faceting. Um, and in sort of just to reread the definition from the book, it specifies how you want to break up or display your subsets of data. Um, okay, so I think this is interesting. So, you know, you basically, um, by, uh, you know, somewhere in, uh, under the hood, you're basically filtering your data and creating multiple copies of your graphs for, for that data. Uh, and which is something uh, like a small multiples um, kind of uh, plot. Uh, give me one sec. Okay, and moving on to quad or coordinate system um, that uh, describes how data coordinates are mapped to the plane of the graphics and theme, which, which is, I was mentioning, uh, I think this controls the final displays of, uh, final points of display, like we could, uh, you know, for, for your company or for, you know, your uh, academic institution, if you want to just follow a set, set um, format 
uh, you could always instead of having to every time add those you know three four five lines of code saying this is what my font color should be or this is what my background color i want to keep for each visual uh, you could actually use themes uh, again there are some uh, predefined set of themes or one can also always um, Oh, yeah. All right, I'll come. Um, and then you can always define your own themes and use reuse them over there. Um, any questions so far? I guess. Did, did you mention geometries? That's the one I don't recognize here. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it was not mentioned. Uh, so geometries are the actual um, uh, plot types that you would mention. So geom bar or geom call or you know geom box plot. Uh, geom histogram. So all of that you you define as what geometry of uh, your visual you're looking at. Okay. And I think one um, important thing, which probably for me wasn't obvious, was when you when you start with, uh, and I guess we, we will see that in the forthcoming chapters. But um, something that is important and stands out is when you when you write your first call to ggplot, you can always mention the aesthetic mappings there. And then you add the geom and you add, you know, text labels if you want to add and, and anything like, you know, any um, scale or faceting if you want to add, you, you keep adding that as layers. But if um, there are things that you want to, uh, you know, keep specific to one type of plot, for example, uh, you know, you want to do a geom bar and then you want to add some text. But, uh, you know, for example, again, there could be many things, but one is like, if you want to change the color in the plot only and not in the text, you want to make sure that that aesthetics mapping you're only doing in the geom bar and not in the geom text. So anything that you want to apply to all entirely on your visual, that's what you would do. That's what you would do in a ggplot call. Okay. Um, yeah, so where was I? Um, so yeah, I guess that's that was something that I uh, learned when um, I think through one of the presentations. So I, I thought this was really helpful. Um, again, I think that's that goes to the uh, concept of uh, layers and graph, grammar of graphics. So if there's something that we want. Um, to apply to the entire visual, you put it in the first ggplot aesthetic mapping. If anything specific, then we do it to that geom. Um, and so after that, so for uh, you know, following through this book and the examples in it, uh, the prerequisites, as they mentioned in the uh, introduction chapter, are our, our, our studio and then these following our packages. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm sure R and our studio we all have. And uh, we can just install these packages once and then we are good to go. And that's about it. That's the introduction chapter. <laughs> Anything anybody wants to add? Any questions? No, well, I think we're off and running. Yep, we're off to a good start. So uh, for the next chapters, do we want to talk about the, I mean, do we want to ask, should, I mean, I can, I can raise anyone wants to volunteer next. Uh, I will share the uh, GitHub repo. Uh, I mean, I, it, it was set up by John, but I haven't had time to, uh, you know, check where, the, where to add the volunteers in chapter details. Um, but until then, anyone wants to um, take the opportunity to present next chapter, which is... Uh, what is the chapter name? It's like maybe chapter two, first steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, right. That's first steps is the next chapter. Um, any takers right now? Or, I mean, of course, we can uh, talk about that in the group, uh, in, in the Slack as well, but just in case. I would, except I have, um, I, I, I scheduled myself for the uh, presentation that week in Mastering Chinese. Okay. So I could take a future week. Okay, sure. 
Okay, yeah, I think um, no, no hurry. Um, we can we can think about it. Whoever wants to can always either ping me or mention uh, you know raise this in the group that you would like to take up the next chapter, and I would um, share this presentation. Uh, I would also share the GitHub repo and uh, another resource that I was saying uh, the other presentation that I was mentioning. Uh, again, that is uh, that was like a brief intro to this book. I felt uh, it, it you know sort of talks. Uh, much uh, it talks a bit in detail of all these layers that I showed the different decompositions of the grammar of graphics. Um, so yeah. Um, so if there's nothing else, I guess that's uh, that's all we have for today. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm so excited and look forward to having uh, coming back in the next weeks. Oh, we can share the uh, GitHub repo link for the book. Uh, if anyone was looking. Thank you, Kent. You're welcome. Yeah, it was in the Zoom, post of the Zoom link from John. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank uh, you for getting us started. Sure, my pleasure. Um, I'm so excited to learn from everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. See you all next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.